Thank you, Chairman. A um, couple things I want to talk about. Do you know, any of you know what the uh, percentage of students who are considered to have grade level math skills is? Because my statistics that are right here before me say that only 5% of students are reaching grade level math skills. Does that sound right? Crickets? Nobody? <laughs> Could you please look at that? I'm reading another stat that says, um, does anybody know what the national dropout rate is of the students, Native American students, their high schools, grade schools? This, no? It's something I, I guess I would plead with both the GAO and the Office Inspector of General to have at the top of their minds as they look at this. My understanding is that is 47 percent, 47 percent, pretty high. Um, part of the issue that we have in Utah, uh, right across uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, across the border there in the Four Corners area, uh, I happen to represent Utah's third congressional district. Uh, we have a lot of uh, the Navajo Nation, 3% of the Navajo Nation, the greater Navajo Nation is in Utah. We have seven chapters in my congressional district. We have a heavy problem or a big problem with uh, roads. and the ability to get to school and back. Mr. Thompson, I don't know what it's like on the Colorado side of, of the line, but do you have these types of problems, school buses, kids, their ability to get to school? How far do they travel to get to school? What's your personal experience on this issue? Um, again, because of the checkerboard nature of the reservation, we also have a, a municipal city mm -hmm. close by to the tribal headquarters. So the tribal community surrounds this municipality and it's, it's pretty close. So, I mean, the access isn't difficult, and it's an improving school system, happy to say. So, good, good. Uh, we work pretty, pretty close to our education department and the school to make sure people are where they need to be. I think if you would look, though, and this is my plea also to GAO and, and uh, the Inspector General's office, as you go out and visit this part of the world, what people don't realize is how expansive it is. Uh, my county, San Juan County, is bigger than New Jersey. Uh, we have one stoplight. Um, and if you look probably into Mr. Gosar's district, uh, look into, you know, in the Four Corners area, mm -hmm. one of the big problems that we have is the ability of our students to get to school because when it rains or there's snow, there is a big problem with, and, and we've got lots of pictures, the school funding levels have not uh, changed or, uh, to deal with the road maintenance. San Juan County is doing everything it can. But you have students that, on average, in many places, miss more than a day of school per month just because they can't get to school. And I think she would like to say something. If have I, you been sworn in, I hope? I have. OK, good. <laughs> yeah, she has. Uh, my name is Melissa Emery Aris. I'm with the GAO. And I, I think this is very much on point. And I want to let you know that GAO is currently investigating this issue of tribal roads and school attendance. And we have a forthcoming report on this topic. Oh, very good. What, do you have a, a sense of the timing of this? I believe it's late spring. Very good. I, that is greatly appreciated. We did offer an amendment on an appropriations bill, and we're able to get that through. But because of the CR, I don't know that it actually made it all the way to the finish line, but um, it, to the levels that we'd like to see in the future. But it is a big problem, and your report would be, be much, much appreciated. Um, the per pupil spending is uh, much higher than it is actually in other parts of the country. Your ability to help us understand why the dropout rate is so high, reading and writing and, and uh, certainly the math level is so low, we would very, very much appreciate it. I could speak to some of that if that would be helpful sure. at this moment. Sure. Um, we have done a look at school spending, and um, you're completely right. It's much higher on a per pupil basis for the BIE schools. Uh, we found that it was 56% higher than comparable public schools. Um, a lot of that has to do, as you point out, with the remote locations of the schools. Um, also, um, the schools tend to have lower enrollments 
than public schools, and in addition, quite a few of the students tend to be low income and in need of special education services, which are more costly. So those are some of the driving factors for the difference in costs. Um, and in terms of the academics, um, as you point out, students um, in the BIU school system do perform worse than students elsewhere. Uh, we found, for example, that uh, students um, attending BIE schools scored 22 points lower for reading tests and four, 14 points lower for math tests in the fourth grade than other Indian students attending public schools. So this is right. you know, very comparable in that way. Um, and as you all know, the graduation rates are also much lower for Indian students attending BIE schools than Indian students nationwide. And so my, my plea, I guess, for the panel and everybody is we can keep doing what we're doing and we'll probably get the same results. But if you want a different result, we're probably going to have to do something different. So suggestions, ideas on what to do different rather than just spend more money, because um, we're already spending more money, we've got to be able to figure out how to get a different result. And we're, we're open to the ideas and possibilities. I've gone over my time. Thank you, Chairman. Yield back. Thank you very much. We're now